What's up? That ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't working even for me. Hello. Um, I don't even know what to say now. Um, hello. Good afternoon. Good morning. Whatever. This is novelty. <laughs> And this is another episode of Keep It Moving Podcast. And with me, as always, I have Mike B. Don't ask. <laughs> I told you I'm trying to find a new beginning. I just want you to <laughs> revel in this <laughs> catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't like it was bad. You like told you me could... to find a new one. No, you decided that you wanted to find a new one. I didn't have a uh, problem with the hello, hello, hello. Well, I didn't have a problem with it. You had an issue with it, but I I didn't expect, well, my ears didn't expect (laughs) the high pitch, what's up? Yeah, it just Um, didn't come out right. And then you just kind of went left (laughs) after that. Like left around the corner down Like, good morning. Like, (laughs) it's dark as hell. I was like, good morning. I said, good afternoon, good evening. (laughs) Oh, hey, I don't goodness. know when everybody's listening. That's true, so, but you, you know, know when it is <laughs> right <a> good now. Day. <laughs> See, I can't even say that because it might be nighttime. It's still day. It's still a day. Okay, good day. <laughs> <laughs> How, you know what? That's what we're going to practice before the show next time. <laughs> <laughs> Your <No>. intro. <laughs> no, we're gonna have, we're gonna just play with it until we find one that works. That just sounds so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Dad just repeated coming off of Halloween. Uh, yeah. Where all the freaks come out. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Not much. Not much at all. Long week. It has taken me fifteen hours, sixteen hours to put up Halloween stuff and pull out Thanksgiving stuff. The Thanksgiving stuff only took about ten, fifteen minutes to to set out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you didn't go from Halloween directly to Christmas. No. You're going you're gonna to uh, celebrate pop- the harvest. To, yeah. <laughs> Food, fun, family. We got to talk about eating. Right on. And I've been seeing like posts of Thanksgiving food. And it's this is like maybe one of the first years that I was like, I actually want some good Thanksgiving food. You want to help time, cook? Mm-mm. <laughs> By the time Thanksgiving comes around, I'm sure I'll be over it. <laughs> but like this is the beginning of the month. It just... I feel that way right now. I, I know Turkey for a fact it's going to change. Mm-hmm. Some old cranberry sauce. Mm-hmm. And, oh. Some good gravy. Mm. Uh, but going back to Halloween, Shantae posted on the uh, Facebook page wanting to know if you were going to share pictures. I did. I put them up. Did you? You didn't see it? I did I not see it. Up. And she asked me about it yesterday. I put a few up. Did you? Are you sure? Uh, on your novelty page or on I the Keep It Moving page? I put on the novelty page, and, and they automatically went up to the Keep It Keep... Moving podcast page. I looked. Okay, show me, show me. Cause... Uh, see, this don't make no <laughs> sense. I'm a grown-ass <laughs> woman, and I got to sh- prove you, myself to you. You got to prove and, it. And the thing that's really bothering me most is the fact that I'm sitting here doing it. I appreciate uh, it, though. Whatever. Um, let's see. Okay. Because, you know, people, uh, we talk about your decoration, and, you know, I talk about it negatively, but people have seen your work, <laughs> and they appreciate it because you, you know, not to hate or anything, but you actually Boom! do. Let me see. So, ha. And oh, you I did. It's like a com- little slideshow. Yes. I even got compliments from the kids when they, well, the handful of trick-or-treaters I had. I got compliments from them as they came through. One little boy says, you had the best house I've seen all night. <laughs> right on. So, That's what I was saying. You do good work. I, I don't really want to give you that compliment, but I have no reason to hate. So I, I'll, I'll give it to you. you no reason to hate. <laughs> I have no reason to hate. You can always find a reason to hate. <laughs> but this time, I, I you, you do good work. Oh, so well, thank you. The, you see the fans. They, they want to see it. They want to see what you're going to come up with. Are you going to share your Thanksgiving uh Plate settings. <laughs> it's, just, it's just my dining room, my setup. Yeah, sure. You should I get like bales of hay and, and put it out in the front yard. And Well, you know, I thought about what to do in the front yard, but I think God does such a beautiful job. With the snow? <laughs> With Thanksgiving. I mean, you've got the, oh, the trees leaves. and the leaves. Uh-huh. and oh, it, I think it's just gorgeous out there. Do you rake your leaves or do you let them just like <laughs> no, disintegrate? I did that one year. I will never do that again. You don't get in trouble by the neighbors? They got leaves too, <laughs> <laughs> but most people have to bag them and put them on the you front. Gotta prove they came from my yard. <laughs> them your leaves. <laughs> I counted no, mine. <laughs> I am not. I, 
you know, I did that one year, and it was the hardest. I mean, it's harder than it, cutting it, the grass. It, it is. Um, so I said never again. Um, then I bought a mower with a mulcher on it. Uh-huh. So I will go out and mow the lawn maybe once or twice. But I have a tree in my yard that doesn't fall until almost January. And by then, snow is on the ground. So it makes it even harder. Yeah, I'm not raking, shoveling. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> when the snow is down there, I don't, I don't shovel. I did that twice in my life, and I won't do it again. I figure by now you would have a snowblower. I will be buying one. I'm trying to buy a house, so I didn't buy anything. Okay. But I'm getting ready to, since I ain't found a house, I'm getting ready to go on and spend some money and buy, um, um, what are them things to. A snow generator. No, oh, okay. A generator. a generator in case power goes out. I got too much food and too many freezers. <laughs> so we got to back that up. <laughs> <laughs> All the stuff you got going on yeah, in that so. house. And then I need, of course, to be able to back up my computers and stuff if the power is down. Right on. But um, yeah. Nope. Not happening. <laughs> but it took me. F- 14 15 hours to put all that stuff away and get it packed up properly so it's easy to find and pull out again next year and it doesn't break because i got some breakable stuff in there yeah all the the glasses that you make and all the decorations and i'm doing thanksgiving glasses now you're making more well i didn't make thanksgiving glasses last year okay so what does a thanksgiving glass look like well i got some with turkeys one says wtf Wine turkey family. Oh, that's nice. So I got. You know, I was wondering one. what that F still for. One says good morning, <laughs> pumpkin. Okay. You know, so just some Thanksgiving glasses, um, wine that's glasses so, and mugs. Yeah, very girly. I'm a girl. Right, right on. <laughs> Last time I checked, <laughs> which was this morning, I'm a girl. Uh, is it offensive for? Well, I know uh, deep down, I know that it s- slightly is offensive. Then why is the question? Because I I just want to ask you know when guys ask girls like you know is that your hair, you know is that your real hair? Depends on the girl you ask. Some women are offended by it. Some women aren't. Depends on the girl you ask. Now I I know that that's your real hair, but it looked like it's fake. Because <laughs> you look so like hip hopish right now and and, and kind of young. I think you you're trying to do something different because you're working out and losing weight. Okay, so, you're trying to you're trying to show me something. So no. I got tired of looking at gray and found some root touch up. Oh, is that <laughs> so what I it is? I sprayed the front of my but hair. But you look like you combed your hair. Like. Uh, do I not normally comb well, my hair? <laughs> I'm saying it looks like it, though. I, I think I just sprayed some of the gray away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not all of it. I didn't want to take it all away. Cause you want to still be seasoned. Yeah. Right I mean, I, I'm, I'm 46 years old. I am seasoned. I mean, but, you, but, you, but you look like hip, like uh, oh, hip hop. Wow. Yeah. I look hip hop. Yeah. I you have got a ponytail little, uh, on top of my head. It's like a, what is this vest type thing you got on? A sweater. It's a sweater like dress jacket. A duster. Is that what they call it? Yes. It's not a muumuu. <laughs> That's when you're old. <laughs> <laughs> no, a muumuu is just like, I, well, I don't wear muumuus. I can't, I don't call them muumuus, but it's just a big dress that kind of looks like a potato sack. It doesn't look like a potato sack. It fits like that. It's just oh, okay. big and loose. Okay. So no, I'll you look big and you loose. look hip. I'm proud of you. Uh, okay. Well, I just got on a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. But you look hip. And, and you got your hair in the ponytail. You like you could fight. Oh, <laughs> you want to fight? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, that's where <laughs> This is the weirdest conversation. So anyway, back to my putting up my Christmas decoration. I mean, my Halloween decoration. So I'm in pain because... Of course, working out, working out, leg day. Oof. I don't know why I pay my trainer to put me through pain. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You know, as you get older, you walk by a mirror sometimes naked because you go into the shower, or whatnot, or uh, doing some other things, whatever. Yeah, but but you, most men don't have those kinds of mirrors. What, <laughs> a stand up mirror? No. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, we got so, the mirror in the bathroom. I've got several stand-up mirrors throughout my house, and I walk through past the mirror, and, and I'll come back. You know, as you get older, you come back and you say, "What the hell is that? Where did that come from?" Well, <laughs> okay. I've got, lately gone across, past the mirror and said, "What the? What the heck is that? Where Uh-oh, did wait a that minute. come wait from? Wait a minute. Oh, that looks good." <laughs> so I know the working out wait. is working. So you're getting some backside. <laughs> I don't think that's even possible. If, if, yeah, if you do uh, enough squats. 
Oh well, I do squats all the time. Yeah, you so you might have some booty coming. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. You might. It's on layaway right now. <laughs> it's on layaway. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> but yeah, so now if I, I mean, every once in a while, I glance at something, and I'm like, ooh, that wasn't there yesterday, or at least I didn't notice it yesterday. And it'll make me say, ooh, I can't wait to go to the gym. Right on. And then I get there, and I'm like, oh God, please, I hate you. I hate you. I hate <laughs> yeah, you. you know it's gonna take that hard work though. Uh, so I'm I'm just uh, glad to hear that you're dedicated and you're still sticking with it. I'm trying. And w- you know what helps stick with it? Seeing results. <laughs> yes. Because with, it, it with does. any diet, with any you know exercise regimen, if you don't see results, it's easy to like, you know what? It ain't working. I'm over it and stop. Right. But you know when you start feeling the pain, mm-hmm. feeling the burn, oh. seeing the results, and I feel the pain. I tell you, putting up all that stuff, and because I was on my feet for four, for fifteen hours, putting all that stuff up, my legs hurt. Why were you I, rushing? I mean, it, fifteen hours don't sound like rushing, but that's still a long time. I would have just taken a couple weeks. Well, the main reason I do it is because I have to pull everything out of my garage to get to where I store the Halloween stuff. Since I only pull it out once a year, it's all the way in the back of the garage and it's a ton of stuff in front of it. Mm -hmm. So I have to pull everything out of the garage and my car won't fit in the garage at that point. So I try to get it done so I can put my car back in the garage. Okay. So um, I did that. And by the time I, I, I got up at 830 in the morning and started and did not stop until 10 o'clock. And by the time I got done last night or the other night, everything hurt. I got to a point where I was like, OK, I don't care about nothing. I'm not pulling my car in the garage. I'm not finishing. I hurt. I'm going to go sit down. I just wanted to sit down. Um I had to run around the corner to Walmart to get another tub to put some stuff in. And as I'm coming back, I go, I pull in front of my garage and realize the bottom row of teeth and the tongue was still on the garage. <laughs> I'm like, Fuck. So I'm did you just, cause? yes, I did. Oh, man. I mean, everything was just going through my mind and it's, of course it's dark now and I don't want to do it in the dark. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I'll do that in the morning. I tell you, I made it. I got up from my desk. I said, okay, I'm on my way. I'm just crazy. Sit down. I'm not doing nothing else. I'm going to the living room to watch a movie. I don't think I made it two steps before I said, no, I'm going to my bed to watch a movie. (laughs) I got in my bed. I was asleep within 15 minutes. Really? (laughs) Yes. I was asleep early yesterday. I was asleep within 15 minutes. And then, um, what movie were you trying to watch? Goonies. I just wanted to watch the Goonies. I didn't see goo. (laughs) (laughs) I saw nothing. (laughs) Um, And then I got up this morning. I was like, oh, I got to get them teeth off the garage. (laughs) So that was the very first thing I did was pop those off and put them away. Oh, I got to get them teeth (laughs) off off the the garage. garage. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And so I got those put up and I mean, just in pain. And then I had laundry to do. And of course, my laundry has nothing in it but jammies, workout clothes, and underwear. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I've done. That's like, all you wear all week. really. Yeah. yeah. That, I've, I've done like five loads of laundry. And I'm like, OK, tomorrow I'm not getting off my couch. I'm not talking to nobody. My little <laughs> sister uh, wants to come and come over, which I want her to come over because she's pregnant. And I want to play with the baby stomach. Which my is? baby sister. OK. Not that sister. OK. <laughs> no, no, no. My baby sister. So I want to play with the baby stomach, but I'm just to the point where I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I want to play with the baby stomach. Yeah, the baby stomach. Okay. It that's kicks. that's interesting. It kicks. Oh, okay. It does things when you poke at it. Do you <laughs> ask ahead of time, is the baby kicking? Or do you just assume that at this point it should be kicking? If so let me not, play with I'll it. Wake it up. This sounds like too much. Baby stomachs. Okay. I can do it to my sisters. I can't do it to perfect strangers. Thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's frowned upon. Anywho, I'm probably not going to move, but we didn't have many trick or treaters. So I've got like a ton of candy. Why you didn't bring it? I should have and left it all here for you. I would have. Uh, I've been taking candy to work for my coworkers. So they would have enjoyed it. Oh, my and God. They, they've been asking like because there's a dentist office like on the next block. <laughs> so they're like, oh, wait a minute. What's going on? <laughs> like, are you are them? you getting referral credit or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> because. You know, we're eating all this candy and everybody's acting like their own diet. You know, I'm on a keto diet. I'm on this. I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I am. Well, I'm not on a diet. I'm just trying to eat healthy and eat right. So I don't eat a lot of candy, mm-hmm. you know, 
And if I do have candy, it's dark chocolate. It is something that's yeah. more healthy. You know, chocolate is good and for you. It's option, just the yeah. sugar that's not. Right. So, you know, I try to find stuff with less sugar and stuff like that and small bits and pieces. I got small bits and pieces of milk chocolate now, and I'm just eating it, and it's there, <laughs> and I can't stop. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to stop eating this candy. But I can't give it to my dog. Yeah, I heard chocolate kills dogs. Yeah, so she can't eat it. <laughs> so okay. I'm like, Ugh. so I'm stuck with all this candy. You can mail it to me. Okay, <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. Look out for the UPS man. <laughs> so uh, did you have fun this week or this Halloween? Did you do anything? I, I actually went, you know, our friend Nisha, she's bought a house. Oh, cool. Uh, I don't know, if did we talk about this? No. Nope. Okay, well, she yeah, she bought a house, so I was over helping her move some stuff around in her house, and thankfully, no kids. We didn't see, like, no kids. You know, she her, she didn't have her porch light on, of course, but we didn't see kids at all, and it was just quiet, calm, even though it was it was a little chilly because it had snowed, early, like, the day before or something like that, which I was, it was unexpected to me that we were going to get some snow, but I was uh, glad that we didn't have to deal with kids, you know, w- at the apartment that I stay in, we have those building lights that look like porch lights that right. we can't control. Right. So they come knock on every door. They, actually, they don't. Oh, good. And I'm surprised that they don't. I, I'm thankful <laughs> that they don't because I don't want to have to now start putting a sign on my door saying no candy or, you know, no trick or treaters or anything like that. Because I ain't got time for kids like that, that. Well, you know, I thought it was weird that kids didn't come out. Everybody was saying because of the weather. And when I was no, little, we easily we rain every out. Uh, what, Halloween you, and we and was nothing out there. Came between us and free candy. <laughs> and candy. So I don't, I don't shoot, get it. No. I don't understand. And see, back then they gave you full size uh, uh, oh, candy yeah. bars. You go to they the right no little fun size bull Some crap. people gave money. You go yep. to the right neighborhoods. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. So, and we travel. We didn't go to to the hood neighborhoods where we knew they wasn't gonna have nothing but them dang on candy corn. Yes, whether you had a costume or not, you put on you cut a sheet open. You, know, yep. you put on like oversized clothes. You you did you whatever did you had to something. do. And we were out there in them streets mm, trick or treating. That, I don't understand, and it didn't matter what it could be raining, snowing, icy. <laughs> it could be a freaking <laughs> nuclear bomb, and we were still going trick or treating. I don't get it. These well, kids did not they, come out. They're tired. From what? <laughs> all they do is sit and play video games all day. Hey, that's draining mentally. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's all I did on Halloween. And then today I went and treated myself. I don't know why I keep considering it a treat to just go to like a restaurant and have my favorite foods. But it's like Long John Silver's. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm you know, most you, people say I treated myself and I went to Ruth Crisp and had a nice steak. I don't you eat treat that. yourself to Long John Silk. Because it's it's a journey to get there. There's not any, you know, a restaurant close. It's off the highway off Shiny Mission. But it's not a journey. It is a journey. It's just a drive. Well, a okay. journey is it's, <laughs> a journey is like, you know, you cross the state lines. You don't even cross the state line. No, and it the takes state about line ain't 10, but about 10 minutes. blocks from you. That's true. It takes about 15 minutes, though. Tree, have so, you ever been to Jazz? Uh, j- right, right around the corner? Yeah. Yes. I don't. They don't season their food enough. Oh, my God. And so I don't, I don't care for it. Well, treat yourself to Ruth Crisp. Or I don't like yourself. steak, so they, it's like they pointless. They sell other things. What, chicken tenders? <laughs> See, I don't even know where Ruth, Ruth's Crisp Down is. Down on the plaza, it, you're not that it's far still there? away. Yes. The one that was over by Tom Fullery's? Yes. Uh, treat your, uh, how about, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. How about this? I, I, you can't treat, I treat me. No, no, no. I'm like, why can't I treat myself to what I want? Because I want it. That's not a treat. That's not treating yourself. It's a treat to me. Like, like every couple of weeks, I'm able to treat myself to church's chicken. Because that's a journey to uh, I'm, I'm an easy day. To oh, I'm an easy really? day. Yeah. Okay, how about I take you out one weekend and you take me out the next? <laughs> <laughs> you treat me to churches, I treat you to steak, huh? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. Maybe around your birthday time we can oh. do that. <laughs> around my birthday time I can be treated. Uh I thought I was going to while I was there, I was like, I should actually go to the movies and, and, and see something. Oh, you're gonna treat yourself I to was a gonna movie treat too. myself to a movie too, yeah. And then uh as I was eating didn't like yourself that much. I said, I don't think I have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like eleven thirty in the morning. I don't think I have time for that. And so I came home. It did what? Uh I played the video game for like thirty minutes to an hour and then took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> 
I I needed that nap because I had I went on an adventure today. <laughs> to Lone John Silvers. <laughs> you sound so freaking old, and you talk about me. Hey, I'm just saying. You I don't, are. I don't you know talk what? about your age anymore. No, anymore. <laughs> you are like seven years younger and you act like you 20 years older. I don't know what you mean. You know I just appreciate that? sleep. <laughs> and you rest. treated yourself to Long John Silver's and said, it was mm, delicious you didn't too. have time for a movie, so you came home and took <laughs> a nap at 11.30 in the morning. Yes, I was ready too. I needed it. Oh my goodness. What time do you go to bed now? Like eight thirty nine. <laughs> and what time are you up from bed? Usually around four or five in the morning. You can, and then I have to like fight myself to like stay there because I got to get up for real, for real in a few hours and go to work. Uh, so that's a struggle. Well, maybe if you was staying up a little later, you sleep until it was time for you to get up and go. I to know, work. but my body tells me when it's ready, and I'm, I'm learning <laughs> to listen. That's why you fight. <laughs> <laughs> so at four thirty in the morning, what do you it do? Just, you don't want to know. <laughs> so many things just went through my mind and none <laughs> of them are clean. <laughs> are we ready for black achievements and excellence? Yes, I think we are. We should definitely move on. Before we switch over to black achievements and excellence or while we switch over, let me just remind you guys that uh, even though we talk about celebrities, we also encourage you all to, if you know of a family member or something like that, or just somebody local in your, your neighborhood, that has done something worthy to be honored on Black Achievements and Excellence. Feel free to send that information to us via the Facebook page. You can send us a message on YouTube. You can post it in the comment section. I believe someone had done that once before, and we talked about it. We, you know, yes. shouted their family member out. That was it was definitely worthy. Yes. There was a, I think, a CNN link, or, or there was another uh, article posted about that family member, so we were able to corroborate what they were saying. But it's not just for celebrities. I wanted to re remind you guys of that. Even though it seems like we talk about celebrities a lot, that's just what we end up, you know, coming across. Uh, it's for regular folk too. There was one time where we gave or honored our very own novelty, you know, for spending like thirty-five years in college, and she finally no. <laughs> Years I'm college. sorry. Wow. Anyway, I think me, me and you talked about this this uh, guy, but I, I it came. We didn't talk about it on the show, and it came back up again. But I wanted to honor six time NBA champion and Charlotte Hornets owner Michael Jordan, who unveiled the first of two medical clinics he has funded in the uh, in Charlotte. The facility will offer care to Charlotte residents, including underinsured and ins and uninsured patients. Uh, the article says in 2017, Jordan committed $7 million to Novent Health to open two clinics in Charlotte. The donation came with a pledge to provide resources to communities with little or no health care. Uh, this clinic will offer typical primary and preventative care, but will also provide patients with behavioral health and social support services, which is something we need to talk about. Okay. Um, this clinic will not only provide access to medical care for those who need it most, but it will connect them to resources to ensure their health extends beyond the doctor's office, which is something we really don't like. I go to the doctor, mm -hmm. but a lot of times when you go to the doctor, it seems like the doctor, some doctors, okay. they just seem like they they just want to talk to you about what's going on right now. And it's not about your actual future or your actual life or they don't ask questions like they're concerned about you. I feel you have to you have to ask the questions you have to demand the time you know I think one doctors I, I give doctors credit because they got a lot to deal with especially with ever changing rules insurance companies whether or not they're gonna get paid they got a lot that they're dealing with but um some doctors just don't care anymore mm -hmm. they're just trying to get a check and they get a I, big I feel like check. that's uh, and, a lot of industries these right. days. Right. And when you find a doctor like that, if you f find a doctor and you don't feel like you're appreciated or or they're doing their job, then you need to find a new oh, do yeah. doctor. Or they're listening. <laughs> right. Or they're listening. You need to find a new doctor. I've switched my doctor because of those exact same reasons. If I'm telling you something's going on with my body and you are not trying to even hear what's going on, we got a problem. I know you have education, but I know my body. I know what feels right. I know what feels different. I know what I've never felt before. 
And because I am in tune to my body and I know when my body is trying to tell me something, you, it is your job to listen to that. So if you don't find a doc, if your doctor is not doing that, get a new doctor. If your doctor staff is not doing the things that they need to be doing, get a new doctor. And you may have, you may just have to switch several times until you find the right one. Unfortunately, yeah, one that's going to listen because ultimately you are in control of your body and your health, as well as mental health doctors, you, a therapist. Mm-hmm. Definitely, if you feel like your therapist is not listening, get another therapist. If you feel like your therapist is just giving you pills and medicating you, or not listening to how you feel when you're on a drug that they give you, get a new therapist. You have to do what you have to do to take care of you. Right on. Uh, Jordan goes on or Michael Jordan goes on to say that I believe that your zip code or your neighborhood should not determine the quality of your health care or whether or not you can even get care at all. And that's the concern. Uh, So shout out to Michael Jordan for at least attempting to give back to the community that's been, you know, giving to him. Woohoo! Yes. Mental health. It's it's important. And it's something that I feel like we should talk about or we should try our best to talk about even more. Because uh, I just came across a story on YouTube because there's this uh, young guy on YouTube who on the surface seemingly like he, you know, he had it all. He had good business. He had a, a popular YouTube channel. His name was uh, Ty, Co- Ty Couture. And, you know, I came across a couple of his videos. He did reviews and stuff like that. And then we, I found out yesterday that he ended up committing suicide. Mm-mm-mm. And it's... What's what I guess what's strange or what some people still don't understand is even though someone looks like they have it all, looks like they have, you know, things together, you still never know what that person is going through. Now, he had shared several, you know, videos with us about him dealing with depression, uh, him dealing with uh, suicidal thoughts. Uh, but you still, you know, once you switch over to a review and start talking about the reality TV stuff, you, you People push that to the side. Oh, you must be doing okay because you're not constantly talking about what you're dealing with. But people don't come to your YouTube channel to hear about what you're dealing with a lot of times. They come to talk about whatever TV show you're talking about. Right. And so they don't they don't look at you or think about your real life. And, I, you know, I deal with this as well as far as people just showing up and in tune with the show. And if I don't put a, a video out on time, it's like, uh, where's the video? Where's not what do you, you know? Is everything okay? Making sure that I'm good. Right. It's like, where's my laughter? Where's my entertainment? And I, that's one of the things I think we take for granted when dealing with even in, you know celebrities and entertainers. We don't think that they have uh, of real lives. We don't think that they go through. And just because everything looks good on the surface, we assume, <clears throat> we assume, and often envy, you know, the life that they have. Not and just like Robin Williams, you know, one of the funniest, mm, yes. you know, people we knew, uh, very talented, you know, and he was still battling with his demons and right. ended up taking his own life. Like That's it's so it's sad. real out here, and it's important that we take care and be in control and concerned about our mental health, especially you know with us being black people, because it's something that we push under the rug so often. And this young guy on YouTube, he was a, a you know a young black man. It's something that we we neglect and not we don't take serious. And it's it's something that we need to talk about more. It's something that we need to be focused on more because it's serious, especially when it ends in the loss of life. This world, this country is just difficult. I mean, everything is hard. If you go back to just my parents, back to when they were coming up, they talk about, oh, things were so much easier because they didn't have to deal with the the things we have to deal with. I mm-hmm. think, you know, and their parents said the same thing. Now, the parents before that, the black ones didn't say that. Right. But life was simpler. It be, and it's because of how... This is how politics affects everybody. This is how the way money works in this country affects everybody. We don't see it and we take for granted, oh, there's an election. It doesn't matter. We take these things for granted. But the reality is they're the things that play out that control the domino pieces of your life. Whether or not you're going to get a house, whether or not if your house burns up or 
falls apart, you're going to get money from insurance to cover what you need to get back on your feet, whether or not there's going to be some type of government assistance there when things go bad, whether or not you're going to get health care when you get sick. All the little things that just happen in a person's life that stress them out. We, especially in this country, deal with more stress than any country in the world because of the way we handle business in this country business and performance is number one that is the number one thing in countries like Spain they take naps every day they stop uh, Guam you're saying I need to go to Spain yes to take my- <laughs> <laughs> uh, Guam for it for instance and it is a U.S. territory but it is not a state so it doesn't have the same rules every day my little brother was stationed over there for four years every day the entire a little country shuts down and everybody takes a nap and then they get up an hour or so later and go back to work as usual they take time for family they take time for fun how many people get up and go to work and they job don't care about their family they job don't care if they pick their kids up on time they job don't care if they miss little bobby's soccer game these jobs and these companies don't care about you they have no personal connection to you and they separate themselves so far away from the actual employee so they don't have to care and all your mm-hmm. your boss can say is well it's nothing I can do about it and her boss says oh it's nothing I can do about it because you have to go so far up the chain to get to anybody who can do anything about it and they usually out on a golf course mm-hmm. relax people don't care about one another and it all to me boils down to being informed about what is happening in your city state country and also giving a shit about somebody else. Period. Period. Stop. Everything is not about you. Yes, there's th- there are bad things in your life, but there are bad things in everybody's lives. There is nobody who has a perfect life and everything is just going hunky dory for them. No matter how no it ma- looks on social media. No, and no matter how much money they got, no matter how much property they own, it doesn't matter. Everybody has issues. Everybody has problems. And if we just stop one minute, and say, okay, let me take my needs and my wants out of a situation and try to see and help somebody else. We've got to start stepping up for one another. We've got to, women, black women especially, and I say black women because I am a black woman. We have got to start stepping up for each other. When we see each other doing well, instead of trying to tear each other down, we need to go and support that. You know, black men, same way. We need to support one another. We need to work together. People need to come together. And I think then we can start to kick the mental health issues we're having because nine times out of 10, these are not issues we're born with. These are not issues that are coming from, from uh, I don't want to call them defects because God made you that way. It's, it's not just a defect. trauma that we've gone through right, growing it's up. Trauma. It, it, it's trauma. It's, it, I don't want to say self-inflicted, but it's world-inflicted, society-inflicted, culturally-inflicted. And if anybody should understand, it should be us. Right. We should understand all of this, and we should care. As soon as somebody starts making money and, or does something nice, we start trying to tear them down. Stop all of the madness. Stop all of the ignorance. Let's lift one another up, help each other reach our goals, and then maybe we can get out of the hellish hellhole that we're in because black men and women have we're born into trauma we are born into it and not because of things that we necessarily did to ourselves but we continue to put that trauma on each other Other, and on each generation because we refuse to step out of the mental hole that we're in and start doing something about it so mental health is a lot about culture and how we deal with one another as well as how we deal with, I got a problem. Oh, I got a problem. So uh, God is going to handle it. Well, God is handling it. He's saying, hey, you know what? There's a therapist down the street. Go talk to him. God is giving you an answer. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not a therapist down the street, your brother is next door. How about you just knock and and let him know you, you need to have a conversation. And and be a listening ear for your brother. Like that's that's one thing. Uh, I think we talked about this uh, a few weeks ago. Maybe it was last season, but I, I was talking about when I watched the show. And I I feel like we've gone on a tangent, but I feel like it's important. Uh, I was watching a show called Black and Crew, and uh, there was a young man who was dealing with depression who was thinking about suicide. And one of the things that I appreciated about the the episode, no matter whether it was a, a real 
uh, like if it was scripted or whatever, what I appreciated about it was the fact that they had some black brothers on there standing in the gap for their friend, willing to talk to him, willing to be a shoulder for him to lean on, willing to be there because a lot of times what we get is judgment. Well, you know, because I don't want to look soft, you know, I don't want to look weak. So I can't go and tell my brother that I'm actually having a bad day. Shit ain't right. And so that's what we need to see more of brother standing in the gap, you know, being an intercessor for your brother. Being, you know, just a shoulder, being a listening ear, being just being there. It can make all the difference. Well, I, I had a friend who used to come to me um, anytime he had a problem, anytime he really needed to talk, anytime he needed to break down and cry. And I just thought it was so odd that he would come to me because at the, I mean, we were we were close, but not like that. And finally, one day he told me, because if I tell my boys about this, all they're going to do is laugh at me. Yep. If they see me cry, yep. all they're going to do is laugh at me. It's okay to cry. Everybody has and emotions. I, I know I've been a proponent because it's, it's just it's like how how we were raised. You know, boys right. don't and cry. And we got to stop that. We've <laughs> so got to stop it's, it's that. It's been ingrained in us. I mean, and don't so, get me wrong. I don't want to see you cry every time I turn you, around. You, wait a minute. You did have an ex that you, you well, talk so much on, crap about. Outside. I got me and my husband. Yeah. I got hit by a dick. He <laughs> cried every five minutes. I mean, that's one thing. But He I was mean, in tune with his emotions. No. No. I, I mean, a woman don't even. If I saw a girl cry like that, I'd be like, all right, you need to get a grip. So it, it had nothing it to do with the fact that he was sex. a man. No, right? Well, absolutely not. But I mean, it's okay to cry. It's okay to be emotional. And then black men and black women, we got to figure out how to start coming back together. We got to figure out how to stop saying marriage is not a good thing. I don't want to be married. I want to be single. God did not mean uh, mean for man to be alone. He did not look at your Bible. I don't read the Bible and I know this. It's in there. You weren't made that way. We were we were made to come together. And we got to figure out how to start figuring out how to live with one another, how to become a team. Because there's nothing better than that team. When I look at black millionaires, black people with money, I I see Jay-Z before Beyonce. And then I see what Jay-Z became after Beyonce. I see Will Smith before Jada Pinkett. And then I see what Will Smith became after Jada Pinkett. There's, it's one thing to build a, a business, to build a brand. It's a whole nother thing to build an empire and a legacy. And I don't think you can do that alone. Nobody can do that alone. Nobody does it alone. The only person not married that has gotten to that point is Oprah. And I don't care what she say. Stedman Stedman been right, right there by her side. <laughs> so they, and Gail. they married in God's eyes. <laughs> you know? it, it, he's been there. Mm-hmm. So she's not been alone. And we've got to stop. And I think that also plays a role into everything that's going on and the higher suicide rates. We do not have teams anymore. It used to be a time when man and woman came together and everybody played a role. Now, the woman might not have liked her role. The man might not have liked his role, but they played a role. Now the roles have switched, turned around, flipped upside down, whatever. Two people need to come together, dis- decide what they want their roles to be, and make decisions on their life. And it's nobody else's business. It doesn't matter if you don't think it's okay what's going on in my marriage. If I'm happy and he's happy, that's all that matters. Are you okay? Uh, or, can we go with it? Yeah. Are you okay with, I guess, coming into a, a relationship that maybe turns into a marriage when it's not, when love is not the focus? Love may become. You know, we may learn to love each other, but that wasn't the initial focus, you know, initially. You know, it became about maybe something like, you know, financial security or just becoming a team so that we can build. And then love happened. And marriage. And that's the thing is, marriage is not just about love. The And I don't think the marriage in oh, definitely in the court's eyes, because court don't give a damn if you love each other. Or right. Not. But even in God's eyes, it wasn't just about love. It was about unity team building so no if you are okay marrying somebody that you're not in love with and he's okay marrying somebody he's not in love with and you all find a way to love each other that's fine as long as you keep true to what you decided the rules were in your marriage whatever they may be 
Now, you, your rule may be, I don't love you, you don't love me, but let's get married because together we can become somebody. I got a girl on this side, you got a girl on that. And if it's that's like, what y'all uh, A recipe do, for, like a proponent for an open relationship, possibly. Right, if, and if you want to do that and both parties are okay with it, the problem becomes when both parties are not okay with it. Mm-hmm. When one party don't know what the or, other party's doing. Or one agreed to it thinking that things were going to change in and, the middle of and it. And that's yeah. the thing. This is where you have to know you better than anybody. You got to know that, okay, if I go into this, I can't change my mind. Or if I change my mind, and this is where that 80-20 rule comes in. I'm looking out for 80% of you. You're looking out for 80% of me. Because as we start to move forward and I start to feel a little different, I start communicating with you. Communication is key for there are four pillars of a relationship. And I'll say it over and over and over again. Trust, communication, love. You have to love each other somehow. You might not be in love with each other, but you have to have love for each other. And you got to be friends. You if think you, you got to be friends. I th- yes, you have to be friends. I have to like you. Well, I, I know that's your rule, but I'm, I'm, you think that makes a successful relationship? Yes. I have to like Not you. Not you. No, <laughs> okay, I mean, but in yeah, general. Yes, yeah, in okay. general. I think you have to like somebody to support them, to, to be there for them when they need you. You, if I don't like you, you, you need me. <laughs> screw you. If if we're not friends, we can. If we can't hang out with each other and be okay, and instead we sitting in a room and oh, you get on my nerves. Oh, he stink. He ugly. This is. Stupid. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Mm. There has to be some kind of loyalty there okay. to one another's, and that's what friendship is. I, I, my definition of friendship, I think, is a little deeper than most people's definition mm-hmm. because I expect trust. I mean, I expect those same same things out of a friendship, right? You know, I expect communication. I I love you. I mean, we're friends. I'm not in love with you, but I have a lot of love for you. If something happened to you, I would be hurt. You think I, so? I, I, I know so. I might even be <laughs> devastated. I might give you that word. You know, it, it would hurt me. Mm. I would mourn your loss if something happened to you. If your legs got broke or you got decomposed decapitated that's it <laughs> you know or you know if that's you dang why'd you go there <laughs> if your head got chopped off if you was in a wheelchair i would call and check on you i mean look i to this day i call and check on you on your mother's birthday mm-hmm. and i I didn't even know you then i just call because that's what friends do they make sure you're okay they make sure if you need somebody to talk to you got somebody to talk to mm-hmm. You know, if anything goes down, you can always pick up a phone and call me. Now, we both know that will never happen. <laughs> you might text me, right. but but you know you can. I, I I totally believe that, yes. And so, and that to me is what friendship is. If you, You're not my friend if I can't depend on you. You're not my friend if I can't pick up a phone and call you when I am in need of talking, whether it's because my whole life, I feel, has just fallen apart or whether or not, I just want to tell you a stupid joke. And it's usually a you just want joke. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, friendship to me is real. It, it It's solid. It is a relationship. Otherwise, if you're not my friend, you're an acquaintance. Oh, we see each other. Hey, how what's up? Walk away. I, I don't care what happened to you one way or the other. Mm. I mean, if I hear you died, I'm oh, wow. That really for real. Yeah, oh, that wow, that's sad. Mm. But to care, care to mourn your loss. I wouldn't do that. So uh, anyway, back to where we were, <laughs> we went way far left. Yeah, but it but it, it, it went. Yeah, you know. it's all about caring about somebody else. Mm-hmm. It's all about stepping up, and it's all about also remembering where we came from and how we got off track as a people and how to figure out how to get back on track. We can sit here and say it's the white man's fault, slavery did it, all we want, but it's time to get back on track. And I think once we start to do that, we will start to see a drastic drop in mental issues and suicides. I'm scared to commit suicide. God going to kick my butt. My mama told me when I was a little bitty girl, God gave you life. It is the most precious gift he ever gave you. And if you take it away, the gift he gave you, how do you think he's going to feel? And I'm like, that scared me. That scared the crap out of me. 
So even though times have been rough and even as a little kid, I'm like, man, I don't want to be here no more. But the thought of ever committing suicide, the first thought that would come through my mind is I'll take the pills to try to kill myself and, and survive and survive. And now I can't walk. Right. <laughs> you know, I'll go and try to drown myself and survive. And now I can't talk. You're a vegetable <laughs> you or know, something like that. Yeah. I'll shoot myself in the head and I'll have an ugly face. You know, it's so I think about those things. I think about those things all the time. Now, I will tell you, with mental health, you have to be careful because therapists like to prescribe pills. Right. They really do. If you don't need pills and your therapist prescribes them, I suggest you tell them, "Uh uh-uh, because they prescribe my little sister pills. And one of the side effects of those pills is suicidal thoughts. Yes. And there's been multiple times where I've come in on my little sister where she's taken too many pills or something. And we know what causes it, but how do you stop it? You know, other than, okay, take her off that med, and then they try to put her on another one. And my little sister needs meds. She needs medication. It, don't so. you think it's sad that to, I guess, to combat your suicidal thoughts, they give you pills that might make you have suicidal thoughts? Well, I don't think they do that for people with suicidal thoughts. It's just mental, mental it's issues, mental, like mental maybe issues. bipolar high, or something like, like that. You like bipolar, okay. high anxiety. Mm-hmm. Some of those pills, even um, sleep deprivation, some of those pills you take cause you to have suicidal thoughts. Um, even the sleeping pills, those things trip me out. Like Ambien, you can be, you be asleep. You go to bed, you pop you a little Ambien, go to sleep. You wake up the next morning, they done told you, you done got in your car. You done drove halfway across the city. You done walked in a store, talked to somebody half naked, get back in your car, try to come home. The police done stopped Were you. Were they half naked or you half naked? No, you half naked. Okay. Because you were in the bed. <laughs> okay. You no, know, if you sleep like me, you <laughs> might not have nothing on. So, I mean, but you've done all of this and they like, what? No, I didn't. Mm-hmm. But what's their mind, they're still asleep, but their body is fully functioning. Mm. You know, so and it's scary because a person like that, can you imagine a person like that behind the wheel? No, nope. that that's a scary thought, you know, and so you kind of got to be whenever you're messing with your brain, you have to be careful. Whew. But anyway. <laughs> um, so people, it's it's serious, you know, make sure you're taking care of your mental health. And uh, looking out for each other. Look out for each other and be a listening ear if someone needs it and, and not be as angry as Mike B all the damn time. Yes. Uh, but I do. Now, you can't say I don't listen. I'm always listening. No, but you part of cancel culture and that's part of the problem. I will cancel people in a in minute. In a heartbeat. But if you have an issue and you need to talk to somebody, I'm You'll always listen. there. Yes. You'll listen. But then you and might say, some, and I'm going to cancel you afterwards. <laughs> some, sometimes I, I feel, I, well, I used to feel like that was. Uh, a negative attribute that you listen that I listen to because then it is draining to constantly hear because when, when, if somebody finds out that you you know you'll listen to them then they might want they to talk to you to, yeah. and so everybody wants to come in you know talk to me and I feel like I'm supposed to be this strong person I'm supposed to be this pillar for people and I'm listening to all their problems when I'm taking all of this in and it becomes draining for me and I'm also dealing with my own shit then you need to talk to someone. I understand, but that, I, but I don't. Right, that, that's your problem. I, I, I understand <laughs> that too, but I'm just saying it could be, uh, it can be a lot. And the thing is, you also have to remember the person that's coming to you and crying on your shoulder. They are more than likely willing to allow you to cry on theirs. A lot of times they are, but you I just won't. No, it's not that I just won't. I just don't believe it. Well, then sometimes you just kind of have to take somebody for their word and try it out. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> I mean, right you, people, if people tell you, I mean, I get it. People say things that they don't mean all the time. I tell people all the time, if you need anything, give me a call. Now, if you call me at the right, the wrong time, I might be, but I still meant it. It's not that I didn't mean it. I meant it. And mm-hmm. I'll go on and bite my tongue and do it. But, um, I mean, everybody has a life, no matter what. Right, so whenever right. you call, you call. Like, my little sister called me yesterday, my baby sister. And she had a lot to talk about. I've been telling the girl to call me for about a month now. She decided to call me as I'm packing up Halloween <laughs> decorations. <stuff>. So, <laughs> you know, she um, called at the wrong time. But I didn't tell her, no, I wasn't going to talk to her. I fussed, I fussed in my head, but I went on and I talked to her because she mm-hmm. needed somebody to talk to. Um, my uncle told me a little a long time ago. Um, 
I answer my phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because you never know when somebody may need you. And I've heeded to that. I answer my phone 24 hours, seven days a week. I really do. Unless, I mean, you won't get me if I'm in the shower, of course, or if I'm in a meeting, Mm -hmm. but I always call back. Now, if I don't call you back, I don't like you. (laughs) Okay. I'm just letting you know, if I don't call you back, I don't like you. (laughs) Um, And then you have to be able to get through to me because due to robocalls, I've done some things with my phone, but anybody I care about, has a, has access has a to full you. path to me mm-hmm. and I, I i will answer my phone i will talk to you now between five, i will say between five and seven in the morning unless you are like direct direct family people i'm close to you won't get through because that five to seven in the morning time if you wake me up then it wakes me out of my sleep and i gotta get up at seven and i'm pissed off when i get up so to keep me from being pissed off all day long my phone does not ring from five to seven in the morning for nobody, but my favorite people. If you ain't in that group, I love you, but don't call me. Like my <laughs> little sister, I had to pull her out of that group. She kept calling me at, she would call me at six fifty five. That last five, five minutes oh, of sleep. The precious like, minutes. Oh. <laughs> so I had to pull her out of that group. And I told her, I said, between five and seven in the morning, you will not be able to get me. So if anything goes wrong, you need to call mama and have mama call me. <laughs> Let her vet it. Make sure it's important. <laughs> and you need to really talk to me. You will not get me. And she hates it. But, I mean, aside from that, I mean, seriously, I answer the phone all the time. Even sleep alone. I answer the phone. And I will wake up and I will talk to you. I got a friend in Georgia. He used to call me every morning or every Saturday morning at 4 a.m. Because he was on, he um, worked as a DJ in a club and he was on his way home from the club and he needed somebody to talk to, to keep him up while he was driving. So he called me because I know your answer. So every Saturday morning, I was up at four o'clock in the morning on the phone. Mm. Just because that's what people need. So, I mean, just be there for each other. That's all I'm saying. That's all. That's all I'm saying as well. Okay. Now, you want to be there for Donald Trump? Mm. Let's talk impeachment. Okay. So, I really don't have much to say about this. We've just gone from impeachment inquiry to formal resolution on the floor. I don't know why they call them resolutions because they don't resolve Jack. But, anywho. Um, We went to formal resolution on the floor. They have now advanced into the next stage. There will be public hearings. So all this stuff that's coming out won't be private. We'll be able to see all these people testify. The Republicans will be able to call witnesses and all that crap. So if you ain't been watching, you ain't missed nothing. (laughs) It's just formalized now. Yeah, it's it's just the same Remember it was a... For a long time, even though like people have been saying and a uh, a couple of representatives have been attempting to, I guess, call for impeachment. But Nancy Pelosi was not on board with it. So right. she officially is on board. Yep. Uh, so right on, I guess. Right we'll we'll, we'll line, see, so you know, what happens. We'll I heard a couple of Democrats voted against it as well. But we'll it's, see it's, what there's always a few. There's- We'll see what happens. That's all we can say. He might, I mean, if he does get impeached, it'll probably be on his last day of office anyway. But anywho, what I really want to talk about is Facebook. Okay. So Mark Zuckerberg went in to the Senate and they wanted to talk to him about campaign ads and everything that's going on with Facebook and the campaign ads. And they were asking him questions. And quite honestly, it was Democrats that were pissing me off. Now, part of it is not the reason things are in place the way they are is not a Democrat, Democrats fault. It was Republicans that actually did made the changes. But the reality is, why is it that Facebook has to abide by a set of rules that no other advertiser has to abide by? They are asking Facebook why they are allowing anybody to run ads why they're allowing them to run false ads why they're not vetting ads this that and the third but they don't ask radio broadcasters that they don't ask television broadcasters that 
the only rules that really apply for radio and television broadcasters, other than okay, you have to actually be a candidate and form formally say, as far as political your, campaigns, as far as political, okay, yes. you have to be a candidate and formally say I'm a candidate. You have to tag your ads with who you are. This, I, I, um, what is it? I endorse this advertisement, so and so, or this organization endorses. Right. Yeah, paid for by so and so. Right, yeah. but the the main thing is both parties have to have the same amount of ads and they have a set price. I can't charge a Democrat more than a Republican or vice versa. I have to charge you whatever the political ad price is. And that political ad price during prime time ugh, are cheap. These are cheap ads. So advertisers take a loss when they run political ads. Some stations uh, won't even do it because of what you have to go through they have to keep impeccable records of how many they ran for this candidate how many for that candidate it has to be equal airtime so they have i mean if they find they're giving too many republicans ads they might have to pull some ads to make room for democratic ads or another third party set of ads they have no choice but to do these things but they don't have to vet their ads so why the hell are we asking facebook to vet their ads as far, as far as comparing it to other advertisements, I don't think it's or advertising agencies or platforms. I don't think it's fair to just like point the finger at Facebook. But we all know the reason is because how Facebook was utilized in the 2016 <clears throat> campaign against. Right. OK, so then or to spread all these but, false narratives, to spread all this it fake wasn't news ads that. Well, I don't want to say it wasn't ads that did it, it was, it was partially in conjunction ads, with, but yeah. it was in conjunction with people. Yeah. The reality is we are adults, at least those people who are voting. We are adults and we need to be adults and do our homework, period. You can't put that on a company. I think that is very unfair to put it on a company and especially put it on one company over the other. Now, if you want to say there has to be truth in advertising, I'm all for it. it. Used to be truth in advertising before Reagan. Reagan made a change, and well, Reagan just denied something which probably should have been denied. It was the Fairness Act. I don't 100% agree with this the act either. So I, it's not so much that he did it, but when he did it, it caused advertisers to be able to do things that they don't normally do. Broadcasters are the ones that are responsible for making sure that the ads are are valid and true but how many political ads have you seen on tv and radio and be like that's a lie uh almost every every campaign <laughs> right and almost every campaign every candidate everything mm -hmm. you know everybody lies about something they take a little something here they change a word here that's very it's very unfair to put it on facebook like that but i, I just like look at uh us and what we try to do you know we try to uh, I guess vet our sources to make sure that we're not getting like old news or we're not right. putting information. I feel like that's the same thing that they're asking for Facebook to do. That's no, not no, unfair. Don't no, you think? but we are an opinionated show. Mm -hmm. We still, I feel like we our opinion shouldn't have to do it then. No, but I think we still we do we it still, just because we want to be reputable. Right. We want to make sure the opinion that we have is on a true story. Mm -hmm. That's all they, why would they have to vet an ad? You paying me for, I, you're paying me for space. To say what you need to say. That's all you're paying me for. So I'm giving well, you that space. Yeah. Okay. I agree that the government shouldn't be trying to mandate it. But I feel like from Facebook standpoint, I, me personally, if it was my company, then maybe I would want to make sure that what I'm now, putting out there is truthful. And if, you, if it were your company. But it should be my decision. But that's your decision. Yeah. Now, I, as far as I'm concerned, I think the government needs to be the one to mandate it. But they don't need to just mandate Facebook. You can't just say Facebook. So if you're going to do you, if it, you're gonna, then it's you're going to be media across, across, the, board. across the board. Yes. The, we have got to stop acting like the internet is, oh my God, it's so new and we don't know how to regulate it. There is absolutely nothing that is done on the internet that is not done in real life. You just have to figure out the the situation in real life that it, uh, it um, coincides with. And that's the mandate. If you can't advertise certain things on radio and television, then you shouldn't be able to advertise them on social media. It's still a form of media. It's time for us to stop saying, oh, well, technology is just moving so fast that government can't catch up. Yes, you can. All you got to do is write it. Take your pen, write the words on a piece of paper, have people vote, and it becomes a law. <gasps> At least that's what the little guy, the little round bill guy. Mm -hmm. I'm just a bill. bill. <laughs> and I'm sitting here oh, on Capitol, Capitol Hill. Hill. Yeah. You know, that's all he was. So 
it, it's not that difficult. We act like it's so difficult. It is not that difficult. We've got a Senate and a House passing all kind of stuff. And it ain't laws that are important. They passing stuff on National Taco Day. National Left Shoe Day. National Left Hand Writer Day. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I want you to do some real work. Like I said, they always got these resolutions that don't resolve j- jack. Do some real work. Let's get in here and say, okay, Facebook ha- um, and social media at this point, social media has now become a, a serious medium for advertisers. So they have to follow this same set of rules that advertisers have to follow. Now, if we don't want adverti- line in advertisement, FCC needs to say, hey, if you line an ad. Is the get- FCC still around? They supposed to be. <laughs> I feel like they've gone by the wayside just like that ethics committee. Right. Uh. <laughs> That's the point. They supposed to be. And we've we've got to start implementing all the tools that are there. You know, we've got people on Facebook harassing folks or, or on Twitter harassing people. Oh, and it's nothing you can do about it. Why not? Well, there's no law against it. It's a law that says I can't harass you. What difference does it make if I'm harassing you on the phone or on my computer? Come on now. (laughs) Let's be real. People, death threats. People get death threats through Twitter and Facebook Mm -hmm. all the time. Why are we not arresting people for this? This is a death threat. You cannot do this. Once you start implementing. Develop the whole cyber crimes division, right? Well, they ain't cyber and no crime. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that difficult. That's all I'm saying. It's not that difficult. Once you start cracking down and letting people know, uh uh, this is not how you do things. And then also, come on, y'all, we need to talk to our children and our brothers and sisters. If I ever see anybody I know uh, with a death threat on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, you and me, we're going to have a discussion and I'm allowed to take you to the police myself. Because you recognize that it's wrong. Right, crazy is crazy. <laughs> you know what's right. We all know right from mm-hmm. wrong. It's not that we don't. I mean, it's a handful of people yeah. that really struggle with it. Right. But we know right from wrong. I would say there's one in the, the White House right now that, that struggles, struggles with, with it. it. <laughs> you know? But we all know right from wrong. And everybody surrounding him knows no, right from know wrong. good in hell well. He might not, <laughs> but they all do. Oh, I, I, I just refuse to believe that. That he doesn't? That he don't know. He know. He's stupid. Though. He know good in hell well. But he I mean, right. we have got to find a we got to find a better way if we want things to stop and we want to stop, you know, worrying about our children, the whole snitches get stitches, learn the difference between a snitch and a whistleblower. It's a huge difference. If I steal candy with you and I tell on you, I'm a snitch. But if I see you steal candy and you know, you're not supposed to steal candy. And I'm like, Hey, you're not supposed to steal candy. I'm a whistleblower. Learn the difference. And it's get up. Off your butts, start taking back your neighborhood, start taking about your streets, start taking back your lives and start taking back the internet. That's going back to the conversation of coming together. We got to come together and take back what's ours. And it's not like, you know, screw white people or anything. It's not that. It's just unifying as a people. I can't come together. I I honestly can't get mad at Russia for what they've done. They are they wanted they're at war with us even though we don't think we're at war with them they want to take over they want our they they want our position in this world so i'm not mad at them for what they did what i'm mad at is us for falling for the crap us for for looking at facebook and saying this is truth instead of saying okay this don't make no sense this is weird did this really happen and following Mm -hmm. up on it and it's not like even now a long time i I still see fake (laughs) news on my social media i got a cousin (sighs) And I swear oh, yeah. everything she finds, <laughs> it don't matter as long as it's against Trump. And it'd be stuff that don't make sense. I'm like, really? Did you even take the time to read the article? Because the headline doesn't make sense. <laughs> These four words don't go together. They, they just don't make mm-hmm. sense. And I mean, you just come on. It's Obama goes to the moon. Really? I told you that's like it sounds like uh, an article or headline straight out the National Enquirer. Right, it's 
like, come on. My grandma's let's favorite be real. newspaper. Come on, let's be real. The National Enquirer has been around for a long time. A long time. But time. Not, not a lot of people take it as a true news source. Uh, I told you how <laughs> granny is. I She's said like, not a why, lot of people. <laughs> why didn't you tell me that Hillary Clinton had a baby by an alien? Uh, and okay. that's the stuff you see on Facebook. And it's mm-hmm. like people believe it. So I can't. Although, I, like I said, I don't hold Russia responsible. I hold us responsible because in the end, we're the ones that went in there and cast that vote. We're the one that went in there and cast that vote off of information we got off of, off of social media and did not bother to check it out with any other source. Just some weird news publication that you've never, never heard, heard of, of yeah. before, never seen. And when you read the article... Half the stuff is spelled wrong. The other half don't make sense. I mean, and the on, rest y'all. is advertisements, <laughs> right? You go, you go onto the page and it's like five hundred ads and two words. Come on, ridiculous. So, what do you think about your boy moving to uh, Florida? <laughs> he running away from New York, so they won't they won't get him. But they, they still New York. They are on his neck. They gonna get him. They gonna get, I, the state of New York is on. If he his does neck. not get in in office, if he he um, does not get voted in this next term, New York is coming after him, and it don't matter if he going to Florida. The only place gonna save him is Russia. Russia. <laughs> <laughs> so I suggest he forget Florida and go to Russia. But he can go to Florida, and hopefully one of them hurricanes will smack his oh, building. Oh Lord! Not him, but his building. His building, Mar-a-Lago. I just want I, I want his property gone. Make sure everybody's gone. One day, you know, hurricane warning, everybody we've evacuated and just take out that property. It just don't I guarantee you he got nice insurance on it too. That's he okay. going he, he going to make some money off That's of okay. it. Just, just like he going to make some money off our backs too. I just want him to suffer. I just want him to suffer. Which he probably is cuz everybody is. So Right on. Just not enough. But anywho, that is our show for today. Got any ideas for my intro? Send me a, send me a comment out there. Let Help a sister out. <laughs> Maybe I'll figure it out next show. Maybe not. Anything else? That's it. All right. You guys have a nice one. Peace.